Good morning, family. Good morning, TikTok. Good morning, Mara Fisher. Good morning, uh, Fortunate Online. Welcome to the protocol breaking prayer session of 5 a.m. You are welcome. Good morning from Zambia. Welcome. Thank you so much. Good morning, Papa. Do introduce yourselves. Where are you watching me from? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Introduce yourself. Where are you watching me from? Facebook and YouTube. I'm anxiously waiting for you. We have to maximize the time before the people that uh, control the electricity <laughs> decide that they want to wake up. Amen. Somebody, somebody's going to be blessed this morning. Hallelujah. Namibia, Midwest, USA, Swart uh, Regens, good morning. Queenstown, good morning. Uh, Kuruman, good morning. Bloemfontein, good morning. Umlazi, South Africa, good morning. Good morning, Big Boss, good morning. Florence, South Carolina. Finder Bell Park is represented this morning. Come on, somebody. Mm. As you are coming in, as you are sharing the live broadcast, I'm asking you to share very quickly. I want you to tap on the screen and make sure that we get those likes to 20,000. By the time everybody is joining us, we would have populated the kingdom of God with 20,000 souls. Just imagine if every single tap is representing a soul that you are bringing to the kingdom of God. So let's get going. Let's get going. Let's get going. Come on, somebody. I see Zambia is ready. Come on, somebody. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Somebody type in the comments section a royal destiny and you announce the country you are from i want to know where is our royalty joining us from jamaica says they've got royalty there foslora says they've got royalty there come on somebody nelto mama nyala says i've got royalty balala centurion i see you god bless you god bless you come on somebody stockfell you're welcome zimbabwe is in the house come on somebody yes 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 god is in control God is in charge. God is about to make some people royalty this morning. As you are coming in, I want you to type in the comment section, um, I am royalty or a royal destiny. Hallelujah. You have a royal destiny. I'm here to announce and release some royal destinies. Talk to me, somebody. Botswana, you're welcome. Virginia, USA, South Africa. Peter Moritzbeck is in the house. Amen, somebody. Come on, somebody. Today, we are dealing with a topic of a royal destiny. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, I am royalty. I am royalty. I am royalty. I am royalty. Let's get more people in the room, guys. Let's increase the tapping. Let's increase the likes. How are you doing, YouTube? Are you getting on board? I see YouTube is off the mark already. They are ahead of Facebook this morning. Welcome, Linda. Welcome, Biki. Her royal destiny from Botswana has joined us. Zimbabwe has joined us also on YouTube. Amazing. Ooh, good morning, family. Good morning, Kelvin. Indeed, it is a good morning. Pongola. Oh, I. Uh, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Hallelujah. We are serving a royal God who leads royal children. Hallelujah. We are serving a royal God. Come on, somebody. There is royalty in your blood and you need to discover this morning what that royalty is about. God is about to do amazingly. Is everybody is still sharing? Is everybody still sharing? Has everybody shared at least with 10 people? Have you shared in the WhatsApp group? Have you shared in the comment section? Have you shared in your timelines on facebook everywhere wake up everybody wake up your friends wake up your families wake up your frenemies i want to make sure that when i start and shoot off i am capturing everybody nobody must be delayed have we announced in the whatsapp group hallelujah let me just check on that hallelujah oh i am loving the speed of youtube this morning youtube saints are off the mark and off the ball oh jesus thank you lord Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody keep on typing? Thank you so much, Martin Dean, for sharing the live. Dumaiza, thank you for sharing the live. Guys, make sure you're just tapping on all that list of people that you see when you click that share live. Everybody who is live on TikTok currently is showing up on your timeline on that little arrow button at the bottom. You share the live with every single person, 15 people, and you come back and you tap, and we are good to go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My God, my God. Something big is about to happen this morning. Hallelujah. I'm about to release some kings and queens in the house. Hallelujah. We have a destiny of royalty that we are about to release. 
Thank you so much, guys. Please type on the comment section and say, I have a royal destiny. Hallelujah. The speed at which you want the Holy Spirit to communicate today will be determined by how fast you comment as well. I, good morning, Sharon from Facebook. I was waiting and wondering what is happening with Facebook. Hallelujah. So I'm going to be checking on you very regularly, but today I'm going to give special attention to the YouTube people because I know you were cut off the feed yesterday abruptly. Um, we apologize because of the uh, shutdowns in electricity in South Africa. Hallelujah. Somebody type a royal destiny. A royal destiny. Keep on typing a royal destiny. A royal destiny. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Thank you, Fortune Online. I see the numbers are improving. We are getting there. We're getting there. God is getting proud of us by the second. I have a royal destiny. A royal destiny. Hallelujah. Our anchor scripture is going to be taken from Genesis 1:28. We're going to track through several scriptures. We're going to see what God wants to say to us. A royal destiny. Come on. Talk to me. Talk to me, YouTube. Talk to me, Facebook. We have a royal destiny. Hallelujah. When we look through the scriptures, we begin to understand that we have a royal destiny. Hallelujah. We are destined to reign in life. Somebody keep on declaring with me and say, I have a royal destiny because we need that declaration to take effect in your DNA, in your genetic molecular cellular level. You know how we do it. Hallelujah. We are going to populate heaven. Hallelujah. With more queens and, and kings this morning, with more princes and princesses today that are coming back to the Lord. Come on, somebody. So we begin to understand when we look at the book of Genesis chapter 128 that God has destined and has plans that he has for his people to ensure that they reign. He gives a specific instruction to man at creation. Hallelujah. After he created mankind, he gives a specific create a, 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 an intention or a plan. He says in Genesis 128, he says, God blessed them. He blessed them. God blessed me and you. He granted us certain authority. He said to them, be fruitful. So he blessed them and gave them authority. I want you to understand that as a child of God, you do not come in at a status of a slave. You do not come in after you are born again. You don't come in with a status of a slave, a status of a worker. You come in with a status of royalty. You come in with authority immediately. You don't have a ladder that you are climbing up. You don't start at the bottom, but you start at the top already at royal level. You are at the state of royalty. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, somebody say, I have royal, a royal destiny. You have a royal destiny. And he says, be fruitful. And he says, multiply. Fill the earth. Subjugate the earth. God bless you, Anna. He says, be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth and subjugate it. Put it under your power. He says, he's, he's, God, he's giving you power. And he wants you to put every single thing that is on earth under your power. Not his power. Look at the beauty of this. He says, put it under your power because his power is already operational inside of you. He says, you, you are to rule. You are to rule. Somebody say, I'm ruling. You are to rule. So if things are ruling you. If things are depressing you, if things are controlling you, that is when you hear people saying, I'm falling apart. That is when you hear people saying, I don't have it together. You should have it together because you are ruling. We cannot have the king falling apart. That is why we cannot have the person who's carrying the oil falling apart. The oil runs from Aaron, it flows from the beard to the whole body. So you cannot fall apart. You need to understand that you are a shepherd in your home. You are a breadwinner in your home. Whether or not materially you are seeing the financial impact or the financial uh, bringing back the bacon or whatever, they would put it in a slangish way. You are the head. You cannot fall apart. When you fall apart, your whole family falls apart. You need to understand the responsibility that you are carrying. You are carrying a responsibility of a leader in your home. Your children who are younger than you, they are looking up to you and they are saying, my God, if mommy falls apart, if daddy falls apart, what are we to do? Somebody say, I will not fall apart, but I will rule. I need people who are ready to rule. Is there somebody who says in the comment section, I'm ready to rule, I'm ready to dominate. Come on, tell somebody. I'm ready to rule. I'm ready to dominate. I'm ready to exercise what prophetic scripture says. The prophetic scripture says, I am to, I'm blessed. I've been given authority. I've been given the power inside of me to subdue everything that is around me. I'm in control of every material thing that is owned by God, that is given by God, that is on this planet Earth. Come on, somebody.
He says, I'm in charge. I put you in charge to dominate every flesh thing, every fish of the sea, every bird of the air, and every living thing that moves by power in earth. Hallelujah. Everything that is moving here on earth, you are in charge and you are in control of it. So when he has given you charge of the fee and uh, of the fishes in the sea and the sea itself, it means there is no marine kingdom that is supposed to overpower you. Talk to me, somebody. I cannot fall apart. Can somebody just declare it? Because I need some people to stop talking and saying, I'm falling apart, I'm losing it. You are not losing it. You don't have the luxury to lose it. You cannot lose it. Especially when you're a parent. You've got children that look up to you. You are not going to lose it. You're not going to fall apart. I can't fall apart. Rulers don't fall apart. Rulers are the ones who come back at the strategy table. They sit with all the leaders and say, I am in charge now. Let me see. You guys might not have a strategy, but God did not just appoint me to sit on this chair to be an ornament. You need to understand the responsibilities of leadership. You need to understand that there's an oil on your head that enables you to come up with a solution. So that solution will come out by fire by force this morning. I am royal destiny. Keep on declaring, my, my darlings. I am royal destiny. A royal destiny is being released this morning. I am a royal destiny. Hallelujah. I have a royal destiny. My God. In Psalms 8 verse 4 to 5, he says, What is a man that you are mindful of him and the son of the earthborn man that you are caring for him? What is me? Who are me and you that you are so mindful of us, God, to give us such authority and such responsibility? Who are you that you would even entrust us to human beings to give us birth here on earth and you tell us that we are kings? Come on, somebody. I am royalty. Somebody keep on declaring your royal destiny. Come on, somebody. He says, yet you have made him lower than God and you have crowned him with glory and honor. Do you understand that you don't have to wait for other people to crown you with glory? He already says in the book of Genesis, right at the Genesis, at the beginning, he doesn't say you have to wait. He says, from the time I formed you in your mother's womb, I've already crowned you with glory and honor. I already gave these things to you. So you need to just access it and release it. Talk to me, somebody. I wish people could share more. I wish people could follow the broadcast where they're on. I wish people could tap more because I would know that you are partners with me in the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. So when God created man, he created him as royalty. You were created as royalty. And the second thing that the Holy Spirit let me know is that a royal destiny involves understanding that you are coming from a covenant with Abraham. And that covenant of Abraham established the very royalty that you are currently walking in now. In the Bible, in the book of Genesis chapter 14, verses 17, the Bible says, then after Abraham's return from defeating the slaughter of Shem, and the kings who were with him the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh come on somebody and I tried to go to jump to Genesis 23 verse 5 to 6 the Bible says, the Hittites replied to Abraham listen to us my lord you are a prince of God guys have you ever seen that the Hittites say to Abraham you are a prince of God you are a mighty prince so when people look at you, they accept to, they expect to see you doing the prince walk. You are a prince. Prince don't walk with their heads down. Prince don't, you may have to cry in private, but you wipe your eyes and you come out. You come out, you fight after your fight and everything after your spiritual warfare. And you step out. You step out like royalty. This morning, this evening, wherever you are watching me from, in your car, in your, in your workplace, you're going to your workplace, you're coming back from your workplace, I need you to take effect of who you are. The Bible says you have a royal destiny and you are going to fulfill it. Nobody is aborting his royal kingdom. You are a prince. He says, Abraham, you are a mighty prince amongst us. You, they recognize that they were amongst royalty. They understand that, yes, we might have a, a destiny of all being part of the royal family, but we understand that you are, you are elevated amongst us. Come on, somebody. He says, bury your dead in the choices of your graves. He says, you get the best choices in life. You choose to do the best of where you want to put your people. None of us will refuse you this grave or hinder you from burying your dead wife. And Genesis 17, 6, he says, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. 
and I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. Do you understand that by the virtue of the covenant of Abraham, which you hail from, of which you have inheritance privileges, the terms and conditions of that covenant, of that will, have put me and you inside of it. By virtue of us being born again, we became sons of adoption and we became entitled to the same inheritance that Abraham has. And Abraham's covenant and will says that he is going to be exceedingly fruitful. So fruitfulness becomes an ordinary nature and personality that oozes from us. Your DNA is of necessity of fruitfulness. He says, I will make you nations out of you. So you don't have the luxury to fall apart and not create those children who are going to become nations, who are going to become big and become somebody out there. Come on, somebody. He says, kings will come out of you. Somebody needs to take up your kingship and kings must come out of you. When you look at your children and pray for your children, you say, you're going to be bigger than who I am. If I only manage to get to prince level, you're going to be bigger. If I only be, manage to become a princess, you look at those girls and you tell them, you not only are you a princess, but you are meant to rule. You are a queen, my darling. Don't forget yourself. Don't sell yourself short. Talk to me. Don't sell yourself short at any given time. He says, as long as you are a seed of Abraham, you don't have to think that you have inferiority in your blood. You cannot be inferior. Somebody type it in the comment section. I cannot be inferior. I don't have the blood of inferiority in my blood. I am a seed of Abraham. I'm a descendant of Abraham. Come on, somebody. I'm a child of Abraham. I move with royalty. That means I'm not going to associate myself with people of low key. People who are of ungodly natures. I'm not going to mingle with the people that are going to bring me down and make me feel like a nobody. I'm not going to mingle with people that pull me into gossip status. I am not a, a, a commoner. I'm royalty. I move with royalty. I associate with royalty. I think like royalty. Talk to me, somebody. As a child of Abraham, you move with royalty. You carry out responsibilities of the nations. You were called for the nations. Let me talk to those who are you, who are called even in spiritual terms. All of you with talents and gifts and gifts of the spirit that are operating inside of you. You are called for the nations. You are not called for being local champions. Those of you who are in business and entrepreneurship, you are called for the nations. Talk to me, somebody. Can you declare it with me? Let me see whether you believe it. I can't believe it alone for you. You have to also believe it and declare it in the comment section and say I am meant for the nations. I'm going to the nations. Those of you who are believing God for fruitful careers, you are applying for jobs. I want you to stop to apply only locally. Apply across the borders. You were meant for the nations. Called for the nations. You can rule in other nations. Instead of complaining and saying foreigners are coming into our land and they are ruling us. It's scriptural. They are fulfilling prophecy. Any foreigner that you don't see, you seem intimidated about that is in your country and ruling, they are fulfilling scripture because you're not taking your position. You are allowed to move around. The earth is the Lord and there's the fullness of thereof. Nobody owns a little square meter and you say, this is my own. The whole earth is given to us to dominate. So when you see somebody else coming in your section or your community, your nation, and they suddenly dominate in areas and you're wondering, why am I not making it? You go and check these scriptures. You go and check whether you've been living out what the prophetic word says you are. Come on, somebody. You are royalty by virtue of, the, of, of, of Isaac's acknowledgement. Isaac, in Genesis 26, 16, Genesis chapter 26, verse 16, the Bible says, Then Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from here because you are far too powerful for us. If people cannot stand your power, people cannot stand your anointing, People cannot stand your oil. They have to tell you, move away from us. You are too powerful. I don't know how many of you have experienced it. They've tried to kill you. They've tried to suppress you. They've tried every charm imaginable under the sun, but they have not been able to because why? The Bible says you are too powerful. You are a descendant of Isaac. They can't catch you. They can't bring you down. So if when you understand what the enemy cannot do, you cannot allow it to happen. I'm too powerful. I'm too strategic. I'm too wise. I'm too open. My eyes are open. Wisdom operates inside of me. I am a king. I'm a queen. I rule according to the wisdom of God. I know the strategy. I know the blueprint. And I know how to execute the blueprint. I cannot not but win. Failure is not my option. Confusion is not my option. 
Failure is not my option. Slow down is not my option. Whenever you experience delay, you understand that you are not ruling. Anytime you see the spirit of delay running mockery around you, you need to understand, I am not exercising the power that is inside of me. Isaac would not be proud of me. You need to understand by virtue of your royal destiny that God does not differentiate between color. God does not differentiate between habitation. The point remains that if you carry revelation, you will see elevation that will shock you. Let me repeat that for everybody so that you understand. It's not based on race. It's not based on where you come from. It's not based where you currently are. It is based on the revelation that you carry. That revelation that you carry will make sure that it carries you to elevation. Somebody declare, I'm, I'm, I'm receiving my revelation to elevation. Hallelujah. I'm being elevated because of the revelation I'm receiving this morning. You will receive your elevation because of this revelation. My God. Your habitation or color does not guarantee your success. Some of you, even if you stay in the suburbs, even if you come from a, a family where they failed you with, with a silver spoon, it does not guarantee your success because you may come from a good family. You may come from a family that provided for you, that left you inheritance, that left you a good inheritance, that you come from a good lineage, but you can mess it up. Imagine if, 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 the, if the father of the prodigal son had given everything over to that son and he would have squandered the wealth of his own, the wealth of his siblings, the wealth of the family. So it is possible that people can blow things up in the wrong way, in a negative way. God bless you, overseer. There is royal blood in every covenant child. There is royal blood that is flowing inside of you that can, you cannot allow certain things to take effect. God bless you, woman of God. There is royal blood that is flowing in you. You are a covenant child and that royal blood has no respect for the ground. It doesn't have respect for the background where you are coming from. It doesn't have respect for the background. Talk to me, somebody. You are royalty. You have a royal destiny. If Jacob did not have an encounter, I would have said maybe there's an issue. But Jacob had an encounter and you are a descendant from his lineage as well. He says in Genesis 32 verse 28, the Bible says, and he said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and struggled with men and have prevailed. So you understand that those who have a royal destiny, they struggle with things in life. Yes, it is true. And they can be struggling with men. But the one thing is certain is that the resultant effect is that you must prevail. Somebody type in that comment section. Can you declare with me and say, I shall prevail. Men may try to attack you. Men may try to bring you down, but you must prevail. You may struggle with some demons that are trying you, but you will prevail because of the blood that flows through you. You may struggle with certain principalities, but you will prevail because you will always remember, I am a royal destiny. There is something that I'm carrying. I, there is a power that I've not activated yet. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Genesis 47, 7 says, Then Joseph brought Jacob, uh, brought Jacob, who is Israel, his father, and presented him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Do you understand that you carry the capacity to bless other kings as well? Come on, somebody. Hebrews 7, 7 says, Yet it is beyond all dis dispute that the lesser person is always blessed than the greater one. So those of you who are feeling lesser, the Bible says you are more blessed than the greater one. That some of you, you just looking, it's just an issue of time. You are saying, but you don't understand the poverty state that I am. You don't understand that currently I don't have a job. The Bible says that the lesser person is always more blessed and empowered than the greater one because the greater one might be cushioned and living from a comfort state. But you who is on the lesser side of things currently in this current season, you're about to switch to the season where he's making everything beautiful in its own time. And why are you going to switch into that season? It's because of your prevailing nature, because of your fighting nature. You are more determined because you are not in a comfort zone. You are fighting to prevail. You must prevail. You know that you've got a lot invested, that your atmosphere must change. And I want you to declare it with me and comment there in the comment section. I will change my atmosphere. My atmosphere must change. I can change the atmosphere in my home. 
If the marriage is looking like it's falling apart, remember what I told you when we first started, you cannot fall apart. Help me tell the other people who are just joining us that I, I, I have a royal destiny. You don't have the luxury to fall apart. You have to change the atmosphere. You have to change the atmosphere in your house, your, the atmosphere from where you come from as well. The atmosphere of where you're going as well. Why do you say I'm a royal destiny, Pastor Fortune? You are a royal destiny because of Joseph's confirmation. Joseph confirms for us in Genesis 41 verse 40. He says, you shall have charge over my house and all my people shall be governed according to your word and pay respect to you with reverence, submission and obedience. Only in matters of the throne will I be greater than you in Egypt. Do you understand that somebody who is a ruler was giving God bless you, Mapula. God was giving charge to Joseph and was saying, you're going to be in charge everything that's going on around me in my house i'm giving you governance in my house everybody around me everybody that i that is in charge that i was in charge of has to respect your word your word is the last word you got people are gonna pay respect they're gonna reverence you they're gonna be submissive to you they're gonna be obedient to you when you understand that you're a royal destiny you don't have to beg for respect in your workplace, respect will come automatically because people have, and have an understanding of the oil. People who have a royal destiny don't have to announce the fact that they are bosses. Your bosshood speaks for itself. It will speak for itself. Keep sharing and keep tapping, guys. Come on. Whoa, Jesus. Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you in charge over all the land of Egypt. Do you understand what it means when they begin to tell you, you are in charge of the whole continent? I'm giving it to you. This is somebody's company, but they're saying, I'm making you in charge. I'm making you deputy VP. You are in charge of the whole continent. You are in charge of all those branches. Understand that somebody has basically handed you their dream, their future. When somebody even gives you the job, don't say, I'm not a manager. You are responsible. Be diligent and excellent in the way you are managing the things that they put you over and in charge over. Manage that business as if it's your own personal business. Don't manage it as if it's a job. The reason why the oil does not produce for some people is because they are treating their jobs as jobs. Just, just enough for them to just get by. Treat it like your business and tell me whether the owner doesn't notice. Come on, somebody. He says, I set you in charge over the whole land. He took off his signet and he gave it from his ring. He took, he took his ring and from his hand and he put it on Joseph's hand. He dressed him with the royal robes of, of, of fine linen. He put the best robes on him. My God. Do you understand that your destiny helper does not necessarily have to be lesser than you? You could be encountering a destiny helper that is apparently going to come with, with beautiful robes of destiny. You are so used to getting handouts, second-hand clothes. You are so used to getting clothes that are torn. But God is saying, no, 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 no. Fortune, tell them that they are royal destiny. Some of you will be approached by people that will take you on a shopping spree. You, when last did you, were you taken to shop for new clothes? I release your destiny helpers that are bringing new clothes to you. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He had him ride in his second chariot and runners proclaimed before him attention, but they bowed their knees to him and he set him over all the land of Egypt. How do I know that you are a royal destiny? Because of Israel's confirmation. Exodus 19 says, Now therefore, if you will in fact obey my voice and keep my covenant agreement, this is God. He says, If you will obey my voice, and if you will obey my voice and keep my commandment, then you shall be my own special possession and treasure among all the people of the world, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation set apart for my purpose these are the words that you shall speak to the israelites am i not talking to the israelites here these are the words that are spoken of you thank you jesus god bless you clinton god bless everybody who's gifting god bless everybody who's participating god bless everybody who's sharing all the people who are tapping may god give you double for your trouble and double for your heart of sharing 
thank you, Jesus. When I trekked with the word and I got to Deuteronomy 14, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, you are the sons of the Lord your God. You shall cut yourselves, no shave, no. You will not cut your, yourselves and you will not shave your forehead for the sake of the dead. For you are a holy people set apart for the Lord your God. And the Lord has chosen you out of all the peoples who are on earth to be a people for his own possession. So stop serving other gods. So stop following culture that contradicts what the will of God and what the word of God says. You are royalty with a specific mandate, specific manual, specific legislation that you're going to rule, how you're going to rule. You're going to walk in humility, but you will never have to ap apologize to be respected. Humility will be your portion, but you will never have to apologize for being respected. Stop making as if, no, 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 no. He says, be humble. But when people respect you because they see the oil on your life, allow them some of you you don't allow people to give you compliments i know sometimes we think it is out of humility because we don't want people to think we've got a big head that our heads are swelling but allow people to give you compliments and to say thank you some of you are not even used to taking thank yous for anybody some people can bless you i don't know when last i received a blessing i was shocked that somebody was on my broadcast for two weeks and, and just gave me a call out of the blue and said, Pastor, I would like to send my seed. And the person quoted scripture and said, this is what the scripture says. It says, those who feed us divine uh, or, or spiritual food, they must also be, 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 be taken care of. I was like, wow. Somebody said, Pastor, can I take care of your dad? I said, what? so this is what the oil is speaking. I don't have to say anything. Come on, somebody. Walk in humility, but don't be shocked when people respect you because they, you have a priesthood. Your priesthood is carrying a crown. My priesthood carries a crown. I don't have to beg. My God provides. The God who gave the vision is the God who provides. Oh, Jesus. You are being elevated this morning. Be humble. But if somebody gives you a compliment and says you are beautiful, say thank you. I compliment other people as well. Even in, when I walk around in shopping malls, I say thank you. And I compliment other people. And you can see some people have never been complimented. You wonder why I keep on saying I love you so much because some of, half of the people here might not even hear I love you for the whole week. And I'm not saying to just puff you up. I'm saying you to tell you that I truly love you and God loves you. Some people don't even get hugs from people. Come on, somebody. Am I communicating? So I need to tell somebody I love you and God loves you and God remembers you. So when I send you out and say, you go and do an act of kindness, go and share your lunch with somebody, I am sending you because I know somebody did not expect that somebody is going to remember them. Somebody is going to be standing at a corner or going to work and there's nothing in their home. Their children were sent out and the, there was not even Vaseline or, or oil to put on their body. And the only thing that was left, that same butter that is sitting on their fridge that they used to put on the bread when they can afford to buy bread, is the same butter that they will use to put on their lips. Talk to me, somebody. I want to share a testimony of one journalist that we grew up with. And... His family was so poor that he used to use the very same margarine, the same butter, not even butter, it was margarine because poor people could not even afford butter. Real butter costed a different amount. But the same margarine, the same fish oil that they could manage to get from next door when they've asked, they used to ask for salt in cups was the same oil that he would use to put on. When it was lunch break, he would leave school and walk back home just to go put on another, uh, um, what do you call this thing, uh, margarine. So you need to understand you are blessed to be a blessing for a reason, guys. God does not just put money so that you look after yourself and your family. You must look up. There are people waiting around you. You might be helping an angel. You might be helping somebody who has not eaten. I'm telling you, 
it is freezing cold. I don't know whether we are beyond zero or whatever. We've never seen snow in South Africa. I don't know, for some people, maybe in another year, another decade, but I've never seen snow until this week in South Africa. And I said to my husband, right now I'm complaining about the three floor blanket, four blankets that I'm currently having now, that I'm still cold. And I'm thinking that there's somebody sleeping under a bridge without even a blanket. There's somebody sleeping without food. What if, what if that this generation, these warriors that are on this platform, this family of Fortune L Online and Mara Official were to just buy a blanket and randomly, you just go and give to somebody. There is an old woman sitting in a house somewhere where you know and you have never seen their children or their siblings and you know that this person, the only thing that they have is their pension money when they go and collect from Sasa or they co collect from their social whatever. What if you could just buy a blanket for them? What if you could just buy a bag of rice for them? What if you could buy a bag of mealy meal and take to them? Come on, somebody. No crying emojis, my darlings. Please, my darlings, okay? We don't want to restrict our views. We want more people to come into the kingdom of God. What if in the, in the place, in the moment where you are thinking you are lacking, can you share your milli mil, your 10 kg and take 5 kg for your family and take the rest to somebody else who needs it? Do you know that that same person, God will elevate one day and will be a blessing in your life and will remember you might not be the benefactor of that blessing in return as well but your children's children might be the benefactors and they will say i know tirani where you come from i've knew i know prudence i used to know your mother and because of what your mother did and blessed i've heard stories and this is what i'm gonna do for you my mother is late but i know the life she touched I can enter anywhere. I, I can be short of five rand to pay for my groceries. And somebody at the till says to me, hey, your mother used to be my teacher. No, don't worry. I got that five bucks. I don't have to panic. I can enter a fuel station and the, 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 the fuel attendant does not have to panic that I'm not going to come back and pay for, for the fuel. If I say I, I forgot my card at home, they know the oil speaks. I'm royalty. Come on, guys. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody declare in the comment section, I'm royalty. I have a royal destiny. Come on, somebody. Leviticus 21, 12 says, Nor shall he go out of the sanctuary, nor profane, make ceremoniously unclean sanctuary of his God, for the consecration of the anointing oil of his God or is on him. There is a consecration of the anointing oil that is upon you. So it matters what you put on. He says, I am the Lord. Because of your royal destiny, you cannot go and be anointed elsewhere. You cannot go and try and assume power somewhere else. You cannot Go and assume a, a magic potions to come and put on yourself. One of the ways I knew I was gifted, there was no way I can coexist with somebody who's using muti. If somebody was using witchcraft, I would literally be sick. And I would ask the person, what did you put on yourself? There's something that's smelling. That was when before I was trained. And when I was trained, I would just say, there's something that smells off. There are some people when you get into the lift, you can smell that there's something that is weird here. Because people think that they put certain oils, certain oils of animals and all these things. They think that they are making themselves stronger, right? Who am I talking to? Who has experienced this? Because surely it cannot just be me. I know there are more gifted people as well. Where you just know something is off. Something smells weird. Because I can't coexist. Jax, don't use the crying emoji, my love. We already know your heart, that your heart is in the right place. You feel it. You, you, you get goosebumps. You say, ah, no, 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 no. Something is off here. I don't have to wait too long. Some people, it's when you lock their eyes or you lock eyes with them. I've had people during church services where their eyes turn green and I see spirits operating through them. And when they try to suppress me that I don't speak, I think that's why, that's why my daughter says I speak like an auctioneer. I don't have time. I have to release everything that I, I'm hearing and I have to release it fast. I come on the broadcast 
And I know that, that there are monitoring spirits that have come to try me. They want me not to be able to speak. But the blood of Jesus covers me. And the saints who are praying for me cover me. Thank you, Jesus. And I, I make sure I pray for myself in case anybody forgets to pray for me. I pray for you all, but if in case you forget, I'm not going to be caught napping. We are fighting principalities and powers and rulers in high places. Come on, somebody. Somebody, somebody declare again, I am royal. I'm a royal de destiny. I have a royal destiny. How do you know, Pastor Fortune, that we have a royal destiny? The prophets say it. Isaiah 28, 5 says, In that day the Lord of hosts will become a magnificent crown and a glorious diadem to the converted remnant of his people. So he's saying the remnant, the remnant of his people, those who are still following God, those who are still trusting God, those who are prayer warriors, those who are watchmen, those who are intercessors, there shall be a what? A glorious diadem up unto them, converted for them. You will receive a crown. The remnant. Oh, somebody say, I'm the remnant. And this one should seal it off for you. Because in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, he says, but you, can you pause for this one? But you are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood. A royal, you are royalty and you are a priest. So it's a combination. It's a double barrel thing. You cannot say you cannot be a priest. You don't have to wait for a priest to enter your house. You don't have to wait for a priest. You are the priest of your house. But before he said you are a priest, he says you are royalty. You need to rule. And then you need to also be what? A priest. It's a dual role. A chosen generation that has royalty, that has priesthood. In functionality on earth, we may come into different dimensions where others are pushing more of the priesthood, but don't forget you're still royalty. Some of you, not everybody can be a priest because some of you need to go and rule. You need to go rule governments. You need to go rule politics. You need to take up positions. I've always said, God, if I'm believing you for something and it's not my time to receive it, let me pray for somebody else who needs the same thing so that they can be blessed. The more I pray for you to be blessed, do you not know that you are going to, God is going to torment you until you bless me? I have no issues. My, my job is to make sure you are blessed. God is the one who's going to execute it. But as long as I'm praying for you and I'm doing my role, not all the lepers will come back and say thank you. But there's that one person that will come back and say, Pastor Fortune, thank you. Thank you for God, for allowing God to use you as a tool and deciding not to go to sleep. That you came to revive my, my spiritual energy. That you came to revive my prayer life. That you chose to come and pray for me. It is because of the burden that I have. I could be hustling just like everybody else. But if we all hustle... Who's going to be, 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 be taking matters to the throne of grace? Oh, you are a chosen priest who come on somebody. A consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession. He owns you. He possesses you. He's a jealous God so that you may proclaim the excellencies of his wonderful deeds. He wants you to proclaim when you proclaim the excellencies of his wondrous deeds. That means things that are wonderful are supposed to happen to you. Things that are miraculous are supposed to happen to you. So that you may proclaim and tell other people about it. And, 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 and let me correct this. You people who are having testimonies and not saying them, what are you waiting for? I don't want you to block your ways. Some of you, you don't tell the testimonies that God gives you. And that's the problem. You need to testify. You need to tell. You need to proclaim it. Yes, there's a timing issue because sometimes we're around Joseph's brothers who may want to bring us down. Please do me a favor. All of you who are coming for the first time on my broadcast, help me follow the account that you are seeing me from. You follow that account, you click on the like button, you click on the notification bell so that you see me. Do that for me, the first thing. And the second thing, please be attentive. Try and get a book, a notebook or something or a journal and a pen so that you can write these things down and be empowered. And you be empowered to rule and to be a priest. I want you to know these things so that you can change certain ways as you enter. 
Because, and I don't blame you. Maybe somebody never taught you. I want you to live here empowered, knowing that these things that I'm saying, you can do yourself. And the more all of us do it, the more the church changes, the more the church evolves and develops. That is why I want to form this relationship with you. So that the job, the burden that God has given me, I continue to offload it. I offload it. I'm, I'm giving you knowledge that you might never hear anywhere else. People can be in establishments, religious establishments, and they never hear this truth. There are people that I'm, I'm, I even know very close, that I see on a daily basis, that go to, to establishments where the pastor is the only one who ever opens the Bible. And they are told that, that that prophet is the only one who reads the Bible and who can interpret that Bible. And I'm here telling you, there is no way if the Holy Spirit tr truly lives inside of you, you have to be able to get revelations true as well. You have to be able to confirm so that you can stop saying, I'm getting false prophecies. Go and confirm it. Your spirit, your Holy Spirit, your spirit inside of you is supposed to confirm it, but beyond your spirit, you have to be able to confirm it in the word. So here on this platform of protocol breaking prayers, we teach the word and we teach you how to pray. We teach you how to prophesy to yourself. We teach you how to interpret your own dreams. Nobody is taking it easy. There is no easy, easy peasy here. Nobody is taking it easy. So if you come from backgrounds where you were never taught and you think you're just going to relax and you're just going to issue instructions, ain't that way happening. I love you enough to teach you. I'm a teacher of the word. It's word and prayer that's going to break you through. You won't be able to deal with principalities if you don't have these two things. Word and prayer. He says, my house shall be a house of prayer. When you come into the house of the Lord, this is the house of the Lord. This is an altar that you have come into. This shall be a house of prayer. That is why we pray. And we can only pray according to as it is written. We only pray as it is written, as it is prophetically revealed. Come on, somebody. You, you need to show off. You need to proclaim. So you need to testify. When I open the WhatsApp group, I'm expecting, when, when I'm seeing those testimonies come through, it gives joy to my heart to say, oh my God, look at them. They are doing well. Don't come to God with a shopping list of complaints. Change your confession. The reason why nothing has changed in your life is because you've been saying the same thing for the past three years. You've been saying, I'm depressed. I'm, I'm going down. And No, change your confession. Speak what you want to see and see whether some difference comes about. Come on, somebody. Revelations 1, verse 3 to 6, it says, Blessed. You are empowered. That person is happy. That, was, that person is prospering. A person who's blessed is prospering. He's to be admired. It is he who reads. Are you hearing this? Guys, you need to go read Revelations 1. By reading that book, read the whole book of Revelations. You are blessed from reading it just alone. Because some of us, well, even when we started, you just read it. And some of these prophecies, you feel like I can't interpret it, but just read it. Keep on reading it. But let me break down verse one, verse three to six in Revelations one. It says, "Blessed, be empowered that there is an empowerment that has come upon you. You are a happier person. You become prosperous. People begin to admire you. Why? Because you read the words and you hear the words of prophecy. Since I started this broadcast, I've been prophesying. I've been giving you the words of prophecy as it is written." And when I switch into the dimension of now speaking in tongues, I'm already releasing hidden things in the prophetic. Come on, somebody. Those who hear, because we can all be here. Some people are not hearing me. Some people are wondering whether, why did I see, did I comb my hair properly? Did I comb my wig properly? They are trying to find out who is this crazy woman who is speaking all these things. Is he a normal? Why is she so excited? Where does she get the energy from? It is only the Holy Spirit. I don't want you to be robbed of what I've experienced in life. I know that trauma can take away certain things. There was a season in my life that I turned away from God. 
after serving him, not after, not before are we, uh, not before born again, no, fully born again, after having planted more than four churches, not small churches, I had grown those churches, and sickness fell upon me, and I was in hospital for more than three months, and I asked myself, I said, God, there must be something wrong with this, there's something wrong with this picture. I've laid hands on the sick and they've been healed and I've prophesied and they've been healed. Why are you letting me go through this condition? I was in that condition, less than a hand, 10, these five, five, 10, 10 people came to visit me in church, from, from church. That is when God liberated me from waiting from the praises of human beings because human beings can forget you just like that. I can disappear on this broadcast and you never see me and you're gonna move on to the next person. You gotta, you just kinda keep stepping. Some of you will remember, oh, there was Pastor Fortune at some point. And I, be, I began to be angry with God. I was like, God, I helped this one. Why have they not come and see me? Because at that time, humanity just began to overwhelm me. I forgot I'm a royal priesthood. I forgot I'm royalty. I was not understanding the lesson God was taking me through. I was just seeing misery and I was saying, God, how can you? I'm not going to serve you anymore. That's what I said. I was angry with God. I said terrible things. I disappeared from preaching. I disappeared from serving. I disappeared from healing. I disappeared from my mandate. And nothing was getting better in my life. And when I thought I was starting... Then I lost my mother. She was in ICU three months as well. I have never prayed as much as I've prayed like that. And I didn't understand. I was angry. I was angry because my prophetic eyes, if they say there was a moment I was in tune, was when my mother was in the ICU. I was on fire. There was nothing I could not see. I was the one phoning the hospital, telling them, go and check the machine. There's something wrong. And the nurse would come back and say, how did you know? And I said, I saw it. I would walk into that ICU that they said we shouldn't enter. I told them that she does not have the diagnosis. They shouldn't put her in that ward. And they still chose to put her in the wrong ward. And she died of an infection that she didn't have to die from. I remember the first week that I went into that ICU ward. And I stood in the middle of the ICU. The matron who was in charge thought I was crazy. And I, I prayed. And they said to me, the very next day, there was more than half of the patients that were discharged because they received their healing. They said, we've never... One of the doctors says, Fortune, if you keep this up, we're never going to have uh, uh, customers. And I said, why should we people be bound if you keep on misdiagnosing them? You have now told me that my mother is in a coma and, 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 and you put her into that coma. That is why I respect doctors and their scientifics, but I cannot discount that there is a God that is a divine healer. And I'm sorry. I want to say sorry because some of you, you lost your parents. You lost so many loved ones during the era of COVID and you shouldn't have just like me. And they tried to tell me, oh, no, no, this is, I said, post-mortem, do a post-mortem. Let me tell you what my mother died of. You are the ones who are responsible. This had nothing to do with what you brought her in here for. And whatever she got, she died from was from here. Let me get out of there because I don't want to be upset. But I've dealt with it, hopefully, by the grace of God. So I know what it is to be angry with God. I know what it is to wait and not have your answers responded to. I know what it is to pray for your own blessing, for your own job, and, not, and it doesn't come. And you, 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 you cannot even be jealous with people who are declaring. Them for, but now I've reached a level when people tell me that they received the job, they got the offer, they got the promotion. I'm excited because I'm saying, okay, God, I'm in my element. And that means what you, are, you have opted for me to do, that means things are working out for people. And I'm glad. I want to rejoice. So don't rob me of my test, of your testimony at least. Tell me so that I can at least know that things are happening for you. So all of you, while you are waiting for your own, pray for your people as well. 
James, I will see my darling. I will ask my hubby whether he allows me to preach tonight. Hallelujah. But I think he's, he's yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll ask by 10 p.m. Yes, yesterday was a surprise. I know you guys didn't expect me to be there. Hallelujah, somebody. Blessed, happy, prosperous, and that person is to be admired who reads and who hears the word of prophecy and who keeps the things that are written, heeding them and taking them to heart. So the things that are written in the word of God, you must take them to heart. That means you must put them inside of you. They must live inside of you. They must, you take heed of them. When you take heed, that means you are following them. You are making sure that there are instructions that you follow. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, Jesus, thank you. And the Bible says in Revelation 1, it says, the time of fulfillment is near. The time of celebration is near. You cannot give up at this point. Come on, somebody say, declare it. I have a royal destiny. The time of fulfillment is near. You can't give up. You can't give up. When I gave up, I was out of ministry. Was it a period of three years or more? I stopped, I think, in 2011. 2012, 13, 14, 15 hours out. I think it was more than three years, four, five, more than five years. Do you know the inboxes that I used to get on Facebook? And people will say, Pastor, why are you not putting anything on your statuses? Somebody said, your status, just something I wrote, not something I preached. He said, it stopped me from committing suicide. It was like God started flooding me with people sending me WhatsApps and telling me what I did for them, how God used me in their lives. And people were asking me, Pastor Gandhi, why are you not preaching again? Why are you not doing this again? When I started on this TikTok, I was not preaching. And when I was about to come back, I said, God, am I really starting a new account? And I said, God, you know what? I'm just going to do. Don't give up. My husband begged me. He said, if you, you need to come back. There was no prophet I did not meet that told me, that did not tell me, Fortune, if you stop praying, if you stop doing what you're doing, God will not be able to operate in your life anymore. I know when the glory lifts. I know when the gifts stop functioning because I felt it. Because I was angry, I blocked it. I said, I don't want to do it. If you're not going to do for me, God, I'm not going to do it. But I had to stop and come out of my selfishness because I saw that the thing, if the thing doesn't work, a person who's insane is the person who does the same thing again and again and again and things don't change. You can't continue in the same way and saying the same things and things are not changing. And I, I started noticing as my husband began to travel more, I had no option because I had to stand in for him. I had to come in and preach on his platforms. And things started showing up again. And my dreams and visions coming up again. I didn't want to do it anymore. I was angry. Some asked, why are you remaining in the background? Because we know the works that you have done before. We know the souls you have won. We know the churches that you have planted. I will no longer look back at, the, at, at what I've plowed. Mm -mm. I'm not looking back. I'm going forward. For this remnant that is here, those who are saying, Pastor Fortune, we are with you all the way, I will come back just for you guys. Even if I came back for one person, let somebody win. Let somebody rule. Come on, somebody. Thank you for those who are following. God bless you. You will never be sorry. I'm a destiny child. You will never be sorry. I will help you unlock your destiny. That one I know God has told me. There's no way around me any everybody is inspired i've known it for years if you look back at my history if you want to trace where i come from spiritually you can google me and you will see that i have always lived by a motto of motivate inspire and transform anywhere i am people must be transformed anywhere i am there is no way you will not be inspired it's a lie i chose to be authentic and to be vulnerable and to present my truth and to tell you guys who i am and where i'm coming from to tell even the monitoring spirits that there's nothing you cannot you cannot suppress me i've come too far i've seen it all i've been i've been i've been abandoned by church crowds after you've helped them i've been i i've, I've seen it all 
That's why I, I don't do it for the crowds anymore. I do it, I do it for God. I know what it means to serve God and suddenly have things that you are plugged in. The season that I've testified about and I told you I've made millions and I lost them. Do you know when my, my millions kept on peaking even more? That's when I was serving God even more. When I served God, I was working, yes, and I was making lots of money and God was opening doors. I did not even have to apply for jobs. Jobs were looking for me until I had to answer the call on a full-time basis. Jobs were looking for me. I did not have to ask for those salaries. God bless you, user. You are, you, you're welcome. Please inbox me. So those of you who have lost it all and you have been threatened of repossession of houses, baby girl, I know what you're going through. I've gone through it. I've gone through the process of having to resell everything. I have been a mad generous giver in the body of Christ. I give, I give like mad. And the more I gave, the more God opened doors for me. I won't lie. I didn't have to struggle for things. And I had to go through the season where God helps me and teaches me that this is where you went wrong. I'm still being prepared. Do you understand me? I'm being repaired. So I'm not shaken. When somebody says, oh, I'm having a financial crisis, I'm, I'm breaking down. That's why I appreciate every gift that everybody gives, every seed that everybody sows in my life, every partner that partners with me, every subscriber. I know that it can only be God that touches you. People have got a bond with money that like nobody's business. So I don't take it for granted because I know those are people who are sent by God. I will expand this kingdom. It was so bad that my mother would say, is it that the furniture belongs to the church? Everything that is in the church, you just give. My mother was shocked when the checks would return in this post and says, is this what you gave in church? What was it for? I said, I don't know. God just said I must write the check. I'm not talking small monies. I could sow 10,000 rands in a beat, in a beat, without flinching. And I don't miss a heartbeat. I don't faint from it. That's why I know that if God can see that he can trust you with a little, he knows he can trust you with the more. And if you trust him with the more, guys, you need to be mad crazy. But I will teach that on another day on, on, on the benefits of serving God. I think I must teach that lesson so you understand that serving God can actually unlock the things that you have, you, 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 you need to do. Your family won't understand it. No. Every single item that I'm broadcasting from here, if I calculate how much I spent, and I spent it with money when I was working, and I, 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 I didn't flinch, and I said, God deserves the best. Anywhere I go, even if I'm invited, I want to know what are the conditions so that I know what can I, what can I do, what can my partners help me do. I love excellence. I love excellence. When it comes to the things of God, I want to present the best. You hear, you hear me shouting when something goes wrong. I want to know, where's my technical team? My technical team is my family, by the way. When you hear me screaming and saying, my technical team, it's my family. Because they have to know that camera has to be right, that camera has to be right. This is my dining room area where I'm sitting. Talk to me, somebody. It doesn't look like a dining table where we eat. Because there's mixers, there's computers, there's cameras, there's lights, everything. Why? Because I want to present excellence. If I don't keep on stepping up in the area of excellence, you would not have been attracted. Some of you were attracted by the presentation. You did not know what was inside the container. You were attracted by the presentation. Those of you on Facebook, you have the benefit of a better presentation even than what, what others are seeing on TikTok. It's all about presentation. Dress the way you want to be addressed. Dress the way you're, where you're going to. Those who keep on saying, oh, Pastor, do you have a church in this way? When we do, when God moves us to plant in those areas because of what your requests are, I will demand the same excellence. You're going to serve God with an excellent spirit. Why should you be having the best, but your church does not have the best? 
My house shall be called the house of prayer. Let me rush through. Let me see. Oh God. Oh, I'm now at the point of prayer. He says, message to the seven churches, verse 4 of that Revelations 1. He says, John, to the seven churches that are in the province of Asia, grace be granted to you and peace and inner calm. He says, peace. You will receive peace and inner calm and spiritual well-being from him who is existing forever and who was continually existing in the past and who is to come from the seven spirits that are before his church of throne. Hallelujah. I'm going to have to break this down in the teaching differently. Hallelujah. He seemed to him who always loves us and who has once and for all freed us from our sins. You are freed from the sins that you have by his own blood. Anybody who belongs to God carries the crown of God. Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody say, I carry a crown. Those of you who are welcome, you are welcome, who are just joining, please make sure you follow the broadcast you're on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Who's that? Thank you, ZD. You carry a crown. Help me tell the people that are just joining us that we are talking about being a royal destiny. I have a royal destiny. You guys are going to live here knowing that you have a royal destiny and you're going to walk in that royal destiny. You carry a crown of God and, and, and you carry a crown. God is raising kingly priests, priests who are kings and priestly kings in your generation. You must also make sure that they come from the next generation to come. You don't walk in pride. Mm -mm. Pride is an overestimation of who you are. You don't have an inferiority complex. What is an inferiority complex, Pastor Fortune? Is having no estimation of who you are. While the kingdom mentality is accurate estimation. When you're having a kingdom mentality of who you are in terms of being a royal destination or a destiny of having a royal destiny, a destiny and being royalty, it means you have a kingdom mentality that is accurate, accurate estimation and evaluation of who you are. Do you understand your worth? Do you understand who you are? My God, help me, Jesus. Let me run through this very quickly so that we can get to be praying. He says, you, there's, there's pillars of royalty that you can check yourself against. Pillars of royalty are the following. The first thing is that you have authority. That is what, what we saw in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Guys, you'll have to watch the replay because of time I want to rush. Genesis 1 28, he says, I gave you authority over everything that is on the earth and everything that is moving around. You have rulership. He says, I've given you authority. Secondly, the second pillar of being a royal person, he says, I've given you prosperity. Genesis 41 verse 40, 41 to 44. He has given you prosperity. This is the story of Joseph that I shared above with you where you saw that Pharaoh gave him this signet ring and he dressed him in royal robes and he put him in charge of everything. The third pillar of royalty is a pillar of opportunity. When you are, you, when you are royalty, opportunities are always presenting themselves out around you. Esther rose for the opportunity. The Bible says in Esther chapter 2 verse 15, Now as for Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her in as his own daughter, when her, when her turn came. So there's always a point where your turn will come from being a slave. There's your turn, there's your turnaround time, and that is the set time when you realize that you have a royal destiny and you start moving in that royalty. He says she requested nothing except what Haggai, the king, is eunuch and attendant said, who was in charge of the woman advice. And Esther found favor in the sight of all who saw her. I pray for you this morning and I decree and I declare that you will find favor on the sight of everybody who sees you in Jesus' name. The fourth pillar of royalty that you have is that you will have dignity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Raja, for following. Thank you so much, Clifford. I see you. God bless you. Welcome to the family. Hello, 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 YouTube. I haven't forgotten you. And Facebook, I have not forgotten you. You will have dignity and honor by virtue of your royalty. If you are royalty, you cannot be a victim of disrespect. Anytime you are disrespected, that means you are not carrying yourself as royalty. Never al allow anybody to disrespect you. Never allow anybody to take your respectability for granted. Never allow anybody to be abusive and talk to you anyhow. Never allow anybody to just dim dim diminish you and tell you you are a nobody. Walk out of those horrific, horrible relationships. Walk out of people who don't celebrate you, who just tolerate you. 
Walk out of the people that make you feel like you are begging. You can walk away and understand that even if you thought that there were the keys and the doors and they, they will unlock and they will favor you, walk away. God has got somebody else in, in line for you. You will not be able to see your, your destiny helper if you are checking the wrong person. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody who's got a neck pain, please confirm for me and tell me how you're feeling now. You've got a neck pain. Never underestimate yourself. The pillar of royalty, another pillar of royalty is a pillar of quality. Only the best is good enough for, for royalty. Don't look down on yourself. Don't look for anything short of the best. Stop choosing the wrong people to becoming your partners. Stop choosing the wrong people for the sake of desperation that you want to marry the wrong people. You deserve quality. Hallelujah. The pillar of quality. Nothing short of the best. Some of us need to learn to stop giving out clothes when they are torn. Give them out when I have... My God, I need to repent. God, I'm sorry. I've got clothes that I've not worn for five years. I don't even know why I'm not going into the storage area and giving them out. Some of them have still got price tags. Nero, by virtue of you being on this broadcast, trust me, you are contacting the anointing that is already speaking to that issue. You deserve quality. You don't need to buy things uh, to own them as well. You understand that people can bless you. Somebody can walk up to you and give you a car. Somebody can give me a car. I'm not, I'm always expectant of God doing the miraculous and doing the things that I didn't expect. I told you, I gave you seven days. I think it was over the weekend. I said seven days, miracles every day, testimonies every day. I've been receiving the testimonies. I just was sworn to secrecy to a, a little bit to say until you announce to certain people that it wouldn't be nice if they hear it on the broadcast. I expect people to bless me. I expect things to just happen. I used to be that person that refuses people to bless me. I wouldn't take compliments. Even my friends would tell me, you've got a, a million dollar smile. I'll say, ah, oh, come on, stop patronizing me. But I've learned to accept it because I've learned to embrace that I'm royalty. And queens have beautiful smiles. So smile. When you leave this morning, after this broadcast, when you meet anybody else, smile. You might have been shouting at your kids last night before they went to bed. And when they wake up, smile with them. Spread joy around your home. God can give you the money to buy things, yes, but he can also cause you to own things without buying them. Do you understand that people can be a blessing? That is why I sent you out to be a blessing to people. Buy groceries for some people. Buy shoes for some child that you can see that their sh shoes are torn. Some children don't even have warm jerseys or, or blazers and they're going to school. Give out the things that you no longer use and you no longer need as well. Give us the th give out the things that you even think you need. Share. Another pillar of royalty is the pillar of security. Come on, bring a smile to somebody today. Security, you are protected. The next pillar is the pillar of righteousness. You Psalm 45 Verse 6 to 7, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness, virtue, morality, and justice, and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you and appointed you above your companions with the oil of jubilation. You have the oil of jubilation. God has appointed you for the oil of joy. So you spread joy. You are protected. And the oil of joy. The oil of joy is flowing to your, your, your spinal cord right now, uh, uh, Maswabi. You have the oil of joy. If your spirit is open enough, Maswabi, you are feeling it right now. You are feeling something moving on your spine right now. Thank you, Jesus. Job 1, he says... 
there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job and he was blameless and upright. This guy had not done anything, but oh my God, the calamity that was on in Job's life. He feared God with reverence and abstained from things and evil. He honored God. He had seven sons, but things were just not working out. Go and read Job 1 verse 1 to 3. My God, you are royalty. Your royalty is rooted in your righteousness the same way that Job had to be rescued. The Job was delivered from his calamity. His wealth was restored a double time more. Why? Because he was rooted in the righteousness of God. Thank you for confirming, Maswabi. Thank you, Jesus. I wanted to show you that God is seeing your issue. Sorry, I'm trying to pin your testimony and your confirmation. I'm struggling. Moderators, please deal with it. You may have come in with a different, you didn't think you're going to receive this type of preaching, but I'm telling you, I am prophesying into your situation right now. You cannot be crooked and be royalty. Royalty is that make, make it in life. Our royalties who are not walking crooked paths. In the kingdom of God, there is no shortcut. You have to walk the righteousness route. You have to get to a point where you actually say, I hate what God hates. I hate sin and I'm going to move away from it because you cannot continue in that sinful state and expect God to do what he promised for those who are in righteousness. Oh God, Jesus, my God. Mm. No more selling yourself to the enemy. Somebody declare I'm royalty as I close. I'm royalty. I'm royalty in Christ Jesus. No more selling myself to the enemy. Let me check on the people on Facebook. Are you tracking with me, Facebook? Are you alive and well? I see you guys. Amen, somebody. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth for the Jews first and also to the Greek whether you're finding yourself amongst the Greek or whether you're finding yourself or you're aligning yourself to the Jews that there is a power of God the power in the gospel the power in everything that has been said on this platform it is the power of God unto salvation to bring you the salvation you need everyone who believes it Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto the, the treasure that is hidden in the field, the, that which a man has found. He hides it, and for joy thereof goes and selleth all that he has, and buyeth that field. You are a treasure, baby. It's very easy to devalue yourself when you think uh, of, of life's challenges, of what you're going through. It's easy to devalue yourself when you are living with somebody who tells you you are useless and you're a nobody. It's easy to devalue yourself. And sometimes the devil even makes us believe that devaluing ourselves is humility. No. Sometimes you need to announce and say, listen, I know who I am. You cannot treat me like that. You cannot abuse me like that. It doesn't matter you think I don't have the money to support myself, but that doesn't give you the right to be violent with me. That doesn't give you the right to abuse me. That doesn't give you the right to look down on me. Walk out on such friends and such partners. Walk out before it kills you. Don't devalue yourself. Don't let people tell you that you are a Christian. Humble yourself. Don't speak proudly of yourself. No, no, no. I'm royalty. I just know my rights. I know that I'm ruling. I'm in charge. You command that thing that tells you that you are nobody, you, 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 that tries to make you have low self-esteem. It's a lie. Child of God, don't fall the tricks of the enemy. Why would you devalue yourself when God has placed so much value, highest value on you? God placed so much highest value that when your sins were about to kill you, he sent his value. He didn't send angels. He didn't send the army. He sent his son his only begotten son to come and die for you on the cross of Calvary to redeem you with blood. You were redeemed with the blood of Jesus. You were bought with the price. So he knows when you are in, in, in whatever low state. Jesus. The devil wants to put you in a position where you have low self-esteem and he knows that he can hoodwink you and get away with murder. Because you are feeling intimidated. 
The devil knows that when you don't have money and you are feeling like, you're, oh, I'm poor, he can hoodwink you into doing anything silly. He can buy your soul. He can exchange your destiny. He can get you to sleep around with him because they're taking advantage of you and you shouldn't let it. Hallelujah. You must not let that thing happen. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. I'm royalty in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody declare it one more time. Jesus paid the full price. He took over the battle completely from you. He fought your battles for you. You don't have to sell your soul. You don't have to sell your soul. You don't have to sleep your way up and you'll sleep your way through. No, I'm going to stand and wait and see the salvation of the Lord. Come on, somebody. When you devalue yourself, it's an insult to the finished work of redemption. When you devalue yourself, you, you, you devalue the high premium that was paid for you. He sent his son, not his angel. He didn't send another human being. He sent his only son. I'm looking around now and I'm looking at the banners in heaven right now. And I'm looking at the sacrifice that God gave for you. He says, fortune, do they not understand the sacrifice that I gave? He looked and he said, it's a sacrifice. It's my, the blood of my child, my only begotten son. But I still choose to give it. My God. Stop putting yourself down and begin to put to see yourself in the light that God sees you. You are the treasure that God saw and he gave up all to ensure that he paid it for you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The man in the field in the scripture that I described went to sell everything in the field so that he can hide the treasure in the field. See yourself from the eyes of Jesus. Carry yourself with the air of royalty because you are royalty. There is a way that your work should change from today. Carry yourself as royalty. That person that has been trying to suppress you in the workplace must see a different walk. Can somebody declare who you are? Who are you? Declare your, who you are right now. When you present yourself and agree with God, you present the state that he sees you in. Can somebody declare, tell me who you are. Let me stop saying it on your behalf. Tell me who you are. Tell me who you are. My God. Any power that has been fighting your royal status, I come against it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can somebody announce who are you? Facebook, come on. Are you talking to me? Ah, this is it. My YouTube people, who are you? Can you announce yourself? Muhammad, announce yourself. Kelvin, announce yourself. Vicky, announce yourself. I'm royalty. I'm royalty. I'm royalty. My God. The devil is in trouble. Look at all this royalty. Look at all these kings and queens that are about to be released. My God. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. People who understand the ways of ruling and reigning in life are here this morning. My God, they are here represented. You're going to have to do some of the things. Some of you will need to work on your royal status because you need to empty version 1.0 and you need to put in a 2.0. Some of you need to remove all the versions and put in a new operating system altogether. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to protocol breaking prayers. Welcome to becoming my family members. Fortune L online. Follow Pastor Fortune. Follow Mara official day. Follow me on YouTube. My handle is in there in the profile. Fortune L online. Watch the replay of this. You will not finish watching the, if you listen to this message three times. And you pray along, you're going to be ignited. You're going to be on fire. Nobody's going to be able to touch it. If you do it on seven days, listening to the same message, I'm telling you, there's no devil in hell will ever make you forget that you are royalty. There might be some conquests that come your way. You're going to fight and you're going to win. There was conquest that Israel faced and Israel took their place at the top because they conquered in their conquest. So whatever is trying to conquer you, you must make sure that you're going to conquer it in the name of Jesus Christ. Whether you're going to be a king or a slave in life, it's a matter of fight. Somebody say, I've got a fighting spirit. Can I talk to some people before I close? Whether or not you're going to win in this life, it's a matter of fight. Whether or not you're going to win the conquest because kings have battles that they fight. They have territories that they take over. They have to fight. 
Some of you are going to have to fight. Can, do I have people who have a fighting spirit? Can you declare, God bless you, those who are giving. God bless you, Mapula. May it rain. Like your name, may it rain favor and blessing in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, MK. It's a matter of a fighting spirit. Whether or not you're going to be in charge or under control, it's a matter of fight. Are you in charge or are you being controlled? It's a matter of fight. I want to see people who are saying, I'm in charge. Not only am I a fighter, but I'm in charge. It's a matter of being in charge. Are you in charge or, 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 or are you being controlled? Can somebody declare, I'm in charge? My God. Whether or not you're going to dominate or you're going to be dominated, it's a matter of conquest. You're going to enter into this conquest and you are conquer. I said to you, you are more than a conqueror. Do you understand? This is not speaking me. This is the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, I'm confirming the written property word that says you are more than conquerors through Christ. We are more than conquerors through Christ. It means you can't be a conqueror without a conquest. There will be things that are trying to control you. There are the things that are trying to tell you that you are not in charge. But you're going to say, I'm going to win this conquest because I know I'm more than a conqueror. I'm in charge. I'm a fighter. I win the battles. I win every conquest that I, I participate in. Come on, somebody. How do you appropriate your conquest? You must possess a fighting spirit. I keep on telling you. That is why. Guys, don't miss the, the, the spiritual warfare uh, midnight Friday as we cross over to, 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 to Saturday midnight. Make sure you come to my profile. You register for the event that you're coming. It's free. Free of charge. Free deliverance. Free free deliverance. Free light will illuminate. Light will just... you you, you, you just come and rule. Come and rule. Come and help others who are joining us for the first time on that day. Come and help them rule as well. You don't fly your way up. You fight your way up. Fight your way up. You need to understand that God does not help cowards. He helps those who are warriors. He helps warriors. You are prayer warriors. He helps warriors. He doesn't help cowards. All these things that I'm saying by the spirit of the living God right now are scriptural and they are supported by scripture. Check me. I love people. I want students of the word. Check me. God does not strengthen the timid. He strengthens those who are ferocious and violent. That's why he goes to Gideon. He says, hey, you mighty men of valor, the men who are thinking I'm a nobody. I come from a nobody, a family. How can you call me a mighty man of valor? Because I'm scared. I'm literally pissing in my pants right now. You are royalty. You are in charge. You are not timid. You are strengthened. Hallelujah. That is who God shows up for. God shows up for those who are ready to take it by force. He says, the violent take it by force. You're not going to take my child just like that. You see your child step out of line. You, 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 you decide to fight. I'm taking it back by force. Your victory was decided before the battle started. The battle that, that swallows other people should not be allowed to swallow you. You should be declaring that right now and saying, I will not be swallowed by battles that have swallowed other people. No battle shall swallow me in Jesus' mighty name. You need to learn to conquer yourself first. Because some of us have got issues. Until you have conquered yourself first, nothing else can be conquered. What are you saying, Pastor Fortune? By the Spirit of God, I'm saying some people need to conquer their fears. You keep on saying, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. You, some of you are not even saying it, but you are feeling it, and you still think that because you're not expressing it. But God sees the heart. Even the enemy knows when you're afraid. Conquer your fears. You cannot, you cannot capture your future if you have not conquered your fears. Your future can only be captured, captured when your fears have been conquered. Come on, somebody. Conquer your fears. Conquer your inferiority. Conquer your low self-esteem. Conquer the things that people have said about you. Conquer the things that people are saying about you. Conquer the things that people are saying about where you grew up from. Conquer persist, you, you, being passive. Oh, my God. English help me. Passivity. Yeah, is that the way you pronounce, right? Don't be passive. Conquer the urge and the spirit of being passive, of being procrastinators. Conquer that spirit. Conquer whatever has tied your mind that has misled you in terms of who you are and what you can achieve. Conquer that thing. Conquer. 
You need to understand that God is too business minded to waste time manufacturing a non-entity. When God manufactured you, when God created you, he knew he was not creating a nobody. He does not create non-entities. Talk to me, somebody. I need to tell somebody that the utterances of what has been said by human beings is not the verdict of God. That is not the verdict of God. What they said about you is not the amen and the full stop. It's not the, it's just a comma and you decide to erase that comma. What they said about you, it's not the verdict of God. If God has not said this, the end is not the end. What the doctor said is not the end. Thank you, Jesus. What are you going to have to learn to conquer? You're going to have to learn to conquer generational limits. Because some of you have been limited by the generations that went before you, cultures that went before you. You're going to have to learn to conquer oppositions. People are going to oppose you. Things are not going to be smooth. People are always going to be trying to oppose you. Even if you think you're entitled to that thing, talk to me, somebody. When you conquer the enemy's oppositions, it means you're going to have to fight your mindset, your mentality, your mind, your mental health is very important. That's why you must protect your energy. Sometimes I switch off my phone to protect my energy. I cannot be around too much negativity. I cannot listen to negativity for too long. Because you are, the more I speak positivity and you want to give me back negativity, I cannot. I'm a sponge. I'm a spiritual sponge. That is why sometimes when I'm preaching, I can feel the pains that you are going through in your bodies. And I tell you, that person who's feeling this, this is what is happening. I'm a sponge. So I, I pick up negative energies and I'm trying to give up positive. I need to refuel myself. Your mindset. Somebody say, I, I, my, my, my mental health is too important. You're going to have to protect your mindset, your mental health. Your mindset determines the outcome of your life how you think because it's coming out of what the abundance of your heart and now you start speaking it what you are speaking is because of what you have been thinking your fears that you have been talking about is because they're coming from your mindset they're coming from your heart condition am i talking to somebody is this resonating with somebody is this helping somebody your mentality will determine your reality. Your mentality will determine your prosperity. Your mentality will determine your authority. Your mentality will bring about the freedom and the liberty you are expecting in God. Your mentality will ultimately define your destiny. Come on, somebody. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. Your destiny is at stake and your mentality is the key. You belong to the future. You must get there. Somebody say, I will get to my future. You belong to the future. You must get there. Until you change your mind, you don't change, you know, until you change your mind, you don't change your life circumstances. The atmosphere around you, the environment around you can only change when you have changed your mind. Hallelujah. Until you change your mind, you cannot break the chains that have been holding you back. Until you change your mind, you cannot fix anything around you. Somebody say, change my mind, Lord. Help me to change my mind. Whatever is not getting fixed is because your mindset has not changed yet. You are getting to your future in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, YouTube. Let's keep going. Thank you, Jesus. Are we still good? Please make sure you are, you are commenting so that I, do, I, I, I ensure that the screen is not frozen or anything. Change my mind, Lord. I'm changing my mindset. I'm changing my stinking thinking. I'm, I'm changing the way I've been saying I'm panicking. I mean, why? Haven't you spent enough on anxiety pills? Haven't you spent enough on sleeping pills? Why do you want to spend your life sleeping when you are supposed to be enjoying life, planning your next trips out? Come on, somebody. You belong to the future and you must get there. You belong to the future and you must get there. Until you change your mind, you don't change your life. Until you change your mind, you don't break the chains of your life. Where, where, where are you fixated on? What are you fixing? What do you want to fix? Change your mindset. Your royalty is not in how you look only. Your royalty is in your genetics. It's in your DNA. It's in your molecular cellular level. Your genetics carry the DNA of royalty. They carry the DNA of greatness. Your mindset, you need to renew your mind continuously because every now and again, you encounter people who want to put and inject things that are negative inside of you. Renew your mind continuously and your status in God. Remind yourself that God is still in control. Even though I may, it looks like there's a delay in whatever I'm trusting God for, it is not denial. God is still working and processing me. Talk to me, somebody. 
when you renew your mindset it's when you are uh, you, you, you you are understanding that you're wake, working on your mindset until you are adequately charged that you can take charge if you don't feel like you're in charge you go back and recharge with God and you plug yourself on that high voltage plug and say God charge me up until I'm adequately charged up to release the enough voltage and the power that I need I need to release the, the, the right level of fire to burn all my enemies, to burn all the witchcraft around me. I need to release the, the, the level of power that you have put inside of me. That will ensure that I'm not disrespected in Jesus' mighty name. I refuse to entertain any demeaning thoughts about myself. Anybody who wants to demean me, I cannot be your friend anymore. Whatever fills your mind will fill your life. Make up a determination. Refuse. Refuse to see yourself the way the enemy sees you. Refuse to see yourself or, or the way negative people see you. Speak positive words into your life in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Those of you who are parents, learn to speak positive words to your children. No matter how much they may be disrespectful and all these things, in disrespecting, sit them down and correct them in love. And don't call your th children stupid. Come on, somebody. How am I going to renew my mind, uh, uh, Pastor Fortune? You're going to correct your mindset. You're going to associate with the correct-minded people. Stop hanging around with people that God always just tell you the negative things. Refuse to see yourself the way the enemy sees you. Connect with the higher power, the, uh, the uplifting grace that is above you. Connect with God. When you connect with God, you begin to dwell in the arena of answers. Holy Spirit, thank you. I hope that somebody is taking this word. Oh God, Jesus. Speak Holy Spirit. Let correction go forth in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, my darlings. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to follow the account you are watching me from and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss our next meeting. I'm back at 10 p.m. tonight and I'm back at 5 a.m. Listen to me. By the grace of God, if Apostle wills, I'll be back tonight at 10. Don't let the problems of life swallow you. You swallow them with the solutions that are already inside of you. Don't let the questions of life swallow you. You swallow them with the answers that you have. There are already answers. The answers you are looking for are already there. It's inside of you. The people who are having questions and the answers are inside of you. You are the solution bringer in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for every single person that has tuned in into this broadcast this morning. That person with a stomach pain just above your breast cage. Who are you? Identify yourself very quickly. I want to declare healing over you right now. It's cutting across your breast cage right here on the upper section. In the name of Jesus. I command healing to come on your body right now in Jesus' mighty name. I command healing to come to your body right now in Jesus' mighty name. I speak to everybody suffering from arthritis. Those joint pains right now, they are leaving you right now in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, DK. Thank you for the confirmations. I have to keep it moving. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercies in our lives. Thank you for your word that has gone forth this morning. We declare your name is blessed, O oh God. We exalt your name. You are holy, God. Every single testimony, my God, in Jesus' mighty name. All glory belongs to you, O oh God. I give it back to you. Every prophetic word. Thank you for confirming the healing, sis. Thank you so much. God bless you. May the permanency be there in Jesus' mighty name. May you stand in the faith. Even if the symptoms tries to come back, you declare, I am healed in Jesus' mighty name. I've, I've received my prophetic word. I walk in the healing. I walk in divine health in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you, Lord, that every single person who's listening to the sound of my voice, you're going to show them the answers and the solutions that they need. What are the solutions and the answers that they need to offer to change their story, my God? Change their story for their generation's sake, my God. Change their story into glory in Jesus' mighty name. Change my own story, Lord, in Jesus' name. 
Father, we receive the grace and the revelation and the light and the insight of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. We receive your revelation. We receive your light. We receive your insight, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for cleansing our minds. Repairing every mental issue. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the baptism of a fighting spirit, of a spirit of being in charge. We receive it, Lord, right now in Jesus' mighty name. We will war in the spirit. We will continue to win in Jesus' mighty name. And in the physical, it will manifest. My God, we will celebrate this year. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. That person with joint pains, like you've got pains in your hands, can you please stretch them for me? Just keep on, I don't know if you see the action that I'm doing, until you tell me that the pain is gone, please. There's a mental renovation that is happening in Jesus' mighty name. There's a mental renovation that is happening. Oh, Dovi, you are doing that. God bless you. Thank you so much for confirming. Were well, you just doing that now? Is the pain going? Is the pain going, my darling? It's out now. I'm left with this part. It's gone. In Jesus' name. God is going to do a deep surgery in your life. You did not land on this broadcast by mistake. That I can promise you that much. You did not land on this broadcast by mistake. I declare and I decree you will not miss the road. You will not miss your turn. Your GPS has arrived. You will no longer be going in the wrong direction because you're going to be walking in your royal destiny and God is going to be ordering your steps every single way thank you Jesus I command that headache to go combo in Jesus name Receive your healing. Somebody say, I receive mental renovation. God is giving fresh mantles this morning. You are receiving fresh mantles to tackle your battles in Jesus' mighty name. God is saying some people are about to territorially take over. Receive the grace to take over by grace. You will take over territories by the grace of God. Somebody declare it with me and say, I am taking over territories in the name of Jesus Christ. I command every voice of the devil that has been locked in your mind with a padlock. I command it to be open right now. That lock is being unlocked in Jesus' mighty name. From wherever you are listening to me from, those de demonic voices that have been speaking, that have locked your mindset in terms of limiting, limiting your mind right now. I unlock it right now. I decree and I declare that wherever you are, your voice shall be heard in Jesus' mighty name. Your voice shall be heard in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we make demands this morning, my God. For the very definition of our royal destiny to take effect, my God, on this prophetic ground, of, on this protocol breaking prayer ground, we make a demand for the definition of our destinies, O oh God. On this prophetic ground, we make, ten, we make demands on the turnaround of our destinies, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody has been looking for a solution. You've been scrolling up and down and you've been waiting for a word. Here's your word. 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 6. It confirms what has been happening with you the whole night. 
You've been looking for a person who is held in honor. You've been looking for an advice on the journey that you are traveling right now. Oh, Kalamasha Takadiabasa. Father, give us an encounter. Can somebody declare and pray along with me? And say, God, give me an encounter. Father, give me an encounter with the prophetic mantle. Release me into authority, Lord. Come on, YouTube, talk to me as well. Are your fingers frozen? Give me an encounter with a prophetic mantle. This prophetic mantle, Father God, I need an encounter. Release me into authority. Release me into royalty in Jesus' name. Somebody declare, I receive total recovery. I receive total recovery in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. By the prophetic mantle that is on this ground, by the prophetic mantle that is upon this altar, I receive total recovery. I receive total restoration of everything belonging to me that is missing. On this ground, Lord Jesus, this morning I did not wake up by accident. I came here by destiny appointment. I receive my God. I tap in on this prophetic ground under this prophetic action. I receive total restoration. Can somebody help me declare and pray this prayer with me right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That person who has been having struggling with breathing. You have been having chest pains. It has been pressing on your chest. Literally when you are even sitting, even now, something is pressing on your chest. Who's ready to make a demand on the anointing? Come on, somebody. Guys, I need you to teach you when the prophetic word goes forth, you need to come fast, sharp, sharp. Sharp, sharp. 1 Samuel 9, 6. Hope you got it. The person who's asking on Mara official. Ogle. I need you to take three, three breaths. Thank you for confirming. You need to move fast because if there's, if there's anything that the Holy Spirit tells me to say, I can't say it if you take too long. I need to move on to something else. Ogle, I need you to take three long breaths, literally. Oh, Mzanzi, Karaba, Soto, Kodiaba. Thank you for confirming that stomach pain being healed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just breathe three times out. And give me that testimony. Thank you for that testimony on Moira Official. The person that I prophesied on their stomach issue has just confirmed. Come on, somebody. Make a demand on the prophetic ground right now. There's a special action moving right now. Father, we receive total restoration. Everything that is missing. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, Father, turn my life. Turn my life around. Turn my destiny around. Change my life around. By the prophetic encounter and the prophetic in in mantle that is at work on this ground, Father God. Turn my life around. Guys, remember your belief and your faith is important. If you don't believe it, it can't come to pass. I need you to open your spirit. I'm seeing other people who are saying they're having pain in their stomachs here as well. I need you to open up yourself to receiving from the spirit of God. If you don't open yourself up to receiving, nothing can happen. You have to have faith and you have to have belief. Father God, I speak 
to every person who's under the sound of my voice right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much, Noah, for subscribing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare grace, grace upon their lives, the release of grace, the release of potential in their life whatever they need to manifest my God whatever they need to manifest that has not seen the light of day my God let there be a release on their lives right now in Jesus mighty name receive the grace of God receive the grace of God receive the light whatever has not seen the light of day that you have been waiting for from January up until now receive it now in Jesus mighty name Father, let the encounter come. The encounter with the prophetic mantle will cause every hidden grace or potential in your life to begin to manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. I need your belief in Jesus' mighty name. Who's got a, a problem in your right eye? Father, I speak healing to that right eye right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, thank you, Lord, that you are turning lives and destinies around by the prophetic encounter, my God, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for receive, re releasing your oil right now. Father, we receive fresh grace fresh grace to live in uprightness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I declare prophetically that every single person who's at the sound of my voice, they shall fulfill the number of their days. They shall not be cut short before their time. Nobody's going to die before your time here in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I prophesy to every agenda of the enemy over their lives. I command it to be broken away in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare and I prophesy into your life that you will not labor in vain, but you will bring forth. You will not labor in vain, but you will bring forth. Those of you who have not been understanding where your money is going. Mm, Tony Grace. Can you lay hands on the, on the eye? Thank you for educating me. I didn't even know the condition. I'm just feeling the, the, the symptoms of it. They say it's keratoconus. Father, I speak healing. Let the balm of Gilead begin to heal that eye right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I, I, I command comfort to start coming right now in that eye in Jesus' mighty name. God, do what no man can do. Only you are the healer, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Kerato Connors, you say, today I'm, I've learned a new word. I've learned a new word. Hang 10 seconds. I'm just anointing myself, um, that person, right now. Father, as I anoint myself as a symbol, I stand in the gap and I, I, I stand as a point of contact right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Perform the surgery on that eye right now in Jesus' mighty name. Did somebody say they received their visa? Congratulations. God bless you. Thank you for confirming it. Father, there is a point of contact. As I anoint my eye, I anoint my head. Every single person who's suffering from headaches right now, I need you to lay hands on yourself. I need you to lay hands right now and proclaim healing on yourself and saying, I am healed in Jesus' mighty name by the stripes of Jesus Christ. I am healed in Jesus' mighty name. I need you to lay hands on yourself and say, I, my star is returned. My crown is returned. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, Fasika. Thank you so much, one pal. I decree that nobody shall replace you in your rightful place. Nobody shall replace you. Thank you for the confirmation of healing. Nobody shall replace you in your rightful place. Take up your rightful place. Receive fresh grace. Everything that has made you to, to fall back. Everything that has made you, your life to be inferior and to be feeling break backwards. You like you're going backwards all the time. Today is broken in Jesus mighty name. I command authority, prosperity and opportunities to come your way. 
I, prom I, 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 I prophesy that you will have a quality life dignity shall be restored in Jesus mighty name security shall be your portion righteousness is being released upon you in Jesus mighty name whatever system has been putting you under pressure in the mighty name of Jesus Christ whatever has been causing you to lose sleep in the mighty name of Jesus Christ whatever has been saying that it you will not get rest that thing will be laid to rest itself I decree a divine encounter for you in Jesus mighty name Whatever your expectations are, they are being fulfilled right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can somebody give Jesus a praise and thanksgiving right now? Those of you who are still having issues in your body or your, your prayer requests, you are welcome to IG me, inbox me. Make sure you put in your number and your email and I will pray for you. Those of you unfortunate online, please make sure you follow me on the, on the broadcast there. And click on the notification bell. Follow Mara Official and click on the notification bell. After the broadcast, the YouTube replay will be up. And you can go and watch it as many times as you want. You can download it and listen to it on in your car or on, on, on your radios, on your phone. And keep praying along. Those of you where you are feeling symptoms of what you were delivered from this morning, if you feel the symptoms re returning or you're feeling like just rebuke it and say, I rebuke you, devil, you are a liar. I've, I've been healed. You keep on rebuking in Jesus' name. So please, I'm asking you for a favor. I do this because I love God and I need you to be liberated. We have a spiritual warfare service every Friday night, midnight, crossing over into Saturday. Please make sure you are there. Whatever you need deliverance from, you will be delivered in Jesus' mighty name. Those of you with dream interpretations, I'm just doing admin now. All those with dream interpretations, you can inbox them, the detail thereof. You can come in on, on after the first three hours. We will now have dream interpretation. By the grace of God, Apostle will be here to help me. God bless you, Mary Taylor. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me a follow. I'm going to come and join you now on um, Mara Official. I'm going to give you my handle on TikTok so that you can find me on TikTok as well. Follow me there. Mr. Rai, you like the midnight prayer because you guys get to talk, right? <laughs> yes, it's good. But guys, remember, when you come into the box, be quick. There's always a lot of people. Be quick. That's why I need you to come to the point. Make sure you're coming with your praise report, your testimony. Come to the point so that everybody gets a chance. And when that's why we're saying de details on what you want an understanding about. Something is happening in your life, visions that you have been having, dreams that you have been having, be detailed. So why I'm even saying you inbox, inbox them to me on IG. Don't inbox them to Mara Official so that I can get him to look through it and so that they are already answered before you even ask to be requested on, and come in the box. So if you go to my timeline on um, TikTok, there is, it says live event. That's the first link that you see. You can click on that live event so that you can sync with your time zone so that my midnight might not be your midnight so you need to just register for the event it's free and you will be on your time zone then the next link that you get on my profile on the timeline is the instagram link you click on that instagram link it gives you a drop down of two things instagram and youtube you follow both channels you send me a message on instagram because inboxing on tiktok sometimes is held back until i approve that i can take the answer it's safe you know but you can inbox on both inbox on insta or facebook i'm fortunate online everywhere my nickname is pastor fortune on on tiktok so tonight 10 10 10 10 what 10 p.m guys on Mara official i'm pinning my account okay do you see it there your hand is healed. Oh my God, Zodra, con con congratulations. Congratulations, Zodra. Thank you so much for letting me know. Is there a reason why this is not showing up? Guys, are you seeing my message on Mara Official? Okay, there we go. Guys, quickly screenshot that message that I've just pinned on Mara Official to see the, the handle that you're going to follow on YouTube if you are interested in watching the replays. And don't forget to click the like button, guys. 
the more you click the like button on the videos the videos are more visible to other people and youtube will send traffic and we populate the kingdom of god so everybody who's here i will be praying for you i am really I, you can ask the other people join the whatsapp group there is a barcode on my timeline you just scan the barcode or if you want me to add you you send me a message with your whatsapp number i'll add you to the whatsapp group so that you don't have any miss meet you don't miss any meeting that um we have sometimes we have impromptu discussions i think in this coming week i'm gonna be bringing a business entrepreneur that is going to help a lot of people that are home who have lost their jobs I've been seeing a lot of people who are saying, how do I um, reboot? How do I reinvent myself? How do I pivot? So I'm, I'm bringing uh, maybe two individuals who are going to come and tell, tell us how their businesses are doing and how they can help. So have a look out for that. It's going to be an impromptu one. It's not one of the schedules. I'm here every day, 5 a.m. and 10 p.m. We have another broadcast with Apostle Mara as well but tonight i'm going to graciously ask him that i can come on and i will continue teaching on the subject of prayer okay so 10 p.m is more teaching guys get a journal get a notebook guys you are blessed thank you so much i want to thank everybody on youtube and on facebook i'm going to stop the stream now if you want to come and still greet and you know when we're, we're jamming out on tiktok come and join us on tiktok right now come and find me on tiktok amen Come and find me on TikTok right now. God bless you. God bless you. I love you guys. You are awesome. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Okay. Love you, Muhammad. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. See you now now on TikTok.